Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have a special review and comparison of some new case folding knives that are not your regular traditional cases. These are the new flipper cases. These are the case Marilla, as well as the case Kinzua. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. I also want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by DLT Trading. Look them up for all of your knife and EDC needs, and you will find a link to both of these knives down in the description of this video. Now, these two knives, when I first heard Case was making some actual uh, more of your current modern EDC flipper knives, I got really, really, really excited because Case is a name that everybody knows. If you know knives, you know Case. It's like Buck. It's like Benchmade. It's like Spyderco. Just in a very different way, they make those traditionals. Um, these are not traditional. These are very much your typical frame lock flippers with uh, some pretty, pretty good materials. We're going to go over all those right now, but First, actually, yeah, yeah, let's go over the materials. Um, i kind of doing these together because I thought that would be best to give you guys an idea of both of these um, because uh, you'll see why later on in the video. But no nonetheless, let's go over them. Let's start with the specs, and I'm going to start off with the Kinzua, and then we'll go the Marilla after that. For the Kinzua, you are looking at an overall length of 8.15 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.4 inches and a cutting edge right around 3.4 inches as well. The blade width is 0.875 inches with a blade thickness of 0.15 inches, so a pretty thick slab of steel on this guy. That steel is none other than S35VN, and we have a Tonto-style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.75 inches, and a handle thickness of 0.49 inches. Handle width is 1 inch on this guy with a handle material of aluminum with a frame lock locking mechanism, a carry of right or left hand tip up carry weight coming in at 3.4 ounces and a price made in america price made in america price of 115 dollars and 99 cents yes just yes well yes on the price but uh <laughs> unfortunately no on a lot of other things we'll, we'll get to that here in a bit uh but now let's go over the marilla we have an overall length of 8.15 inches with a blade length of 3.4 inches and a cutting edge of 3.4 inches. The blade width on this guy is 1 inch with a blade thickness of 0.15 inches as well. Again, S35VN steel with a drop point style blade, a flat grind, a handle length of 4.75 inches with a handle thickness of 0.53 inches, so just a little thicker on this guy with a handle width of 1 inch as well. Uh, handle material, we got aluminum with, I believe this is a G10 insert um, with some very, very good uh, grippiness to it. Um, as to where the rest of the knife is rather smooth, you have that nice bit of traction there on the G10 inlay. We also have a frame lock for a locking mechanism with a user of right hand, left hand tip up carry and a total weight of 3.6 ounces on this guy. And the price goes up just a little to $135.99. Again, though, $135.99 for American made. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that all day. Um, but now we have to get into the kind of some things that I'm not okay with. And there's unfortunately a lot of things that I'm not okay with with these knives. Um, but we're also going to do some size comparisons, though, get those out of the way. Here we have uh, another uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and another Benchmade 940. So we're keeping it all made in America today. We'll move it up. The uh, the Kinzua does not, just really does not want to uh, stay up, but we'll leave it just like that. So as you can see, um, in terms of length, actually, uh, the Kinzua is pretty close to the... 940 and really they're kind of close to the pm2 as well in terms of blade length but you just have such a big difference when it comes to that handle handle on the pm2 is always big and bubbly um but just taking that out of the picture i think just really comparing them to the 940 right here gives you a, a pretty good idea of, of what you have obviously a little bigger than the 940 but nonetheless there you go now let's get into it so this is why I decided to do these knives together, because unfortunately, um, these knives have some flaws. 
Um, and I think it's best to just address them both on this video, but also cover the positives because there's a lot of positives here too. There really is, and I truly mean that. I'll hit on all that at the end. Uh, but first, let's get into the blade. Now, in terms of the blade on these guys, um, neither one's super slicey, but the Kinzua coming in at uh, 21 thousandths behind the edge, That now that is the edge of the flat here. It does thicken up considerably more on the tip, as it should with the Tonto. Um, it, it's actually a surprisingly good cutter. Not slicey, but it's definitely going to take care of most EDC tasks you have. Um, and it's a nice thick steel at S35. It's a tougher steel, at least, you know, compared to S30 and other, you know, mid-grade steels. S35 is obviously a premium steel, but nonetheless, 21 thousandths behind the edge. Uh, I think a decent blade design. I do wish the blade stock was a little thinner since it's such a narrow blade. Um, I think this blade is too narrow to be 15 thousandths and come down to a, you know, respectable slicey edge. But as I said, it's still going to be pretty good for, you know, EDC tasks and whatnot. Now, the Marilla, surprisingly, I thought this would definitely have a better edge. Um, the edge on this guy is, is really just not good. Uh, we're looking at 27 thousandths in thickness, and that's not the real issue. The real issue was just how many burrs and how not sharp this blade was. Um, I could get a piece of paper here. Let me grab a piece of paper on my printer real quick. And uh, we'll, we'll run through a, a, uh, a piece of paper with this, just so you guys can see. Um, first, we'll do the Kinzua. I don't do this very often because I don't think it's necessary, but it's probably worth it here. So obviously you can see it tore it a little there. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it's just not... That's the sharpest thing in the world. Actually, it did a lot better when I was cutting it earlier. So that's the Kinzua. And then here is the Marilla. Yeah, they're just, they need to be sharpened better. These were, yeah, these these were out of the box. These are out of the box sharpened edges. So uh, not good. Not, not good in terms of quality there. Um, this one really did cut better when I was just cutting it by myself. So that was a little surprising of what that just did. But this one here is not surprising because I can literally drag my finger along the blade and feel, like I can feel the burrs that weren't knocked off. Um, just not a very good quality job of sharpening on that. Um, aesthetically, they both look good for whatever that's worth. Um, you know, there is a line where aesthetics just don't matter if the blade doesn't perform. Um, and it's, it's a pretty quick line to hit. Um, if it's no, I think we're also used to blades on new knives now being so sharp out of the box. Um, you don't have a whole lot of, you know, poor sharpening jobs out of the box. Unfortunately, these have that. Um, both blades are off-centered pretty bad. This one is actually touching. Yeah, it, it is absolutely touching the frame there. So the aluminum handle, not, not very happy about that. And then as you can see right here, off-centered considerably. This one, at least, it's not touching. It's, it's actually totally fine. It's just off-centered. So that will really bother some people. It won't bother others, um, you know, to each their own. When it comes to the detent, or at least like I, some of it's the detent. It depends where the actual issue is. But in the Kinzua, you have this wiggle. See that? See how the blade wiggles as I just move the flipper tab? This is still in, in the locked position, but the blade is wiggling in the detent. So, I, I mean, detent wiggle is kind of what I call it. Everyone calls it other things. There's all sorts of names for it. But detent wiggle, as you can see, if you look more so down here when I'm moving the flipper tab, you can, as I'm trying to keep my hand still, you can see the blade moving. Uh, that's not good. That's, that's, that's really bad should never be happening especially with a new knife maybe a really old knife after a lot lots of use and beating on it maybe something like that can happen uh should not be the case with a new knife oh <sighs> yeah this is the, the this is not and this isn't a fun review guys but it's one that i want to do because again we're, we're working towards some positives here um, but yes, in terms of the blades, they're just, they're not very good. Aesthetically, if everything else is on point, um, aesthetically they're good, but there's just too much missing to say anything too positive about them. Now going into the handle and ergos, the ergos are actually, I think, okay on both of them. 
Um, no real issue with the ergos whatsoever on either one of these. I've, I've held worse on many other knives, especially the Marilla. I do prefer the ergos on the Marilla a little more than I do the ergos on the Kinzua. Um, mainly because of the flipper tab here. It comes down a little too quick into my finger. Not a hot spot. Doesn't really hurt or affect me real bad, but I don't necessarily love the way it feels. Um, but still, respectable ergos on both knives. Now, when it comes to the pocket clips on these guys, though, look... I mean, this is just, this is, this is like a kindergarten mistake. This is not something you should see on something. And I get that Case has never done this before, but I got to think they'd be taking notes from the competition. Um, really bad screws in the pocket clip. They come up really high, um, could very well catch some pants pockets. And it, yeah, just not a very good job. I don't mind the height of the, the bent deep carrier clip. That's fine. I mean, that's kind of like a, uh, a lynch clip or something. I mean, the, the height is no big deal. Um, the retention and strength is decent on both of them, but those screws are just obnoxiously too tall and uh, they're bound to catch some some pants pockets. So, so not a good thing there. Uh, that's really just unacceptable. Now, in terms of handle construction, I, I do have to say being aluminum and, you know, they feel solid. They, they, they don't feel cheap. They feel nice and sturdy. Um, I can't say I love this G10 inlay on the Amarillo, or Amarillo, on the Marilla, <laughs> on the Marilla. But uh, regardless, I do, I do really like the grip it gives because the rest of the handle is a little slick. So having that grip really does help. Going into the action. So now the action on both of these guys, the action on the Marilla is... I would say really good. The action on the Kinzua is average, but what really makes it bad is, again, that wiggle of the blade. I mean, it, it wiggles a lot more doing this. This is all within the detent. This is bad. Just very, very bad. So that really takes away. So, like, say the blade's in here. When you go to push out on the flipper, you feel that first. And the detent is a little weak on this guy. Um... Yeah, it's it's it just it needs a lot of work. Um, I feel like Case really rushed these. I think they should have taken a little more time, done a little more QC, a little more, a little more uh, double checking, crossing their T's and dotting their I's. Now I will say the action on this one's really good. The action on this one is really good. Uh, no issue with the action on this. It's it's just the still the fact that the blade's really off centered. Um, yeah, and they could definitely use some more jimping back around this flipper tab. This jimping might as well not even be there. That's that's basically not there. It looks like it's there, but you don't feel it really almost at all. You feel it just enough, but it doesn't do anything in terms of functionality when it comes to flipping the blade out. Um, that's all done with force and pressure, and I do the push-button method, which, again, you can slip because the jimping sucks, but the blade will fly out if you push-button it right. Oh, gosh, this is kind of painful. Um, overall thoughts, and this is where I am going to get positive, and I truly mean this. So, I really like where Case started with these. I really do like where they started. They had, I think, good designs. Good or, uh, you know, slightly better than good designs, in all honesty. The materials are great. I got no issues with S35VN, uh, with aluminum handles, with everything else they have in here. These are on bearings in terms of deployment. So there's a lot of good things going on here. And it's American made. These prices, $115.99 and $135.99. Those prices for these materials and made in America, that is fantastic. I, that's a yes for me all day, but not for these two. Um, but these need a lot of work. A lot of work, and not necessarily in the design. Just the the, the, the touch-ups. They need better. They need better sharpenings out of the box. They need. They you know. They need the better edges. They need um, more attention to quality when it comes to the detent because it doesn't have that. You have that wiggle. Um, it, it needs some better jimping. It needs recessed screws. It needs a lot of the finer touches that all the other companies even, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to really crisscross it with Chinese manufacturing, but it's not so much that the Chinese can do it and we can't or someone else can do it and we can't. It's that they are doing it regardless. I, price, 
forget price for a second. And those little details are being done by all the other manufacturers and it's making their knives very, very nice. Um, very, you know, just fun and enjoyable to carry. When I got these in my pocket, it really, I really noticed how much I appreciate all the other knives. So what I really want to see from Case in regards to these is improvement. Just improvement. Keep the materials, keep the designs, but fix the detent. Sharpen up the edges on these blades. Uh, go back to the drawing board and look at what your competition's doing because they're not doing this and their knives don't have this. There's just a lot of things that that they're really missing with here. And in all honesty, they're not that far off. They're really not that far off from having a very, very nice product um, because it's already using the right materials and priced right and looks good. But it, it's got to feel good. It's got to perform good. And right now these don't. So there you go. Obviously, I'm not going to recommend these. But if you really do want to try a, a new American-made knife, these are still available. And let me know if you've already had these. Did I just get a couple lemons by chance, especially this one? Um, I, I don't know. It's always hard to tell when I just have one of each. You know, this is obviously, I, I'm not speaking for the entire run of these knives. I'm speaking on behalf of the two I have. Um, these two were very disappointing, especially the Kinzua, which in all honesty, I was a little more excited for the Kinzua than I was the Marilla, but I ended up liking the Marilla a lot more than the Kinzua because of the quality issues. So that's just kind of where we're at with them. Yeah, this kind of felt awkward, but it, it it's the honest review and the truth, and that's what I want to give you guys and bring to you on a uh, very regular basis. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts on Case and these knives if you've experienced them yourself. Hopefully you've had better experiences than I have, but I really do truly hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and until the next one, I'm out.